All right, so let's take a look at who is eating good served by Applebee's. We'll circle back at the end of the show for Atlanta and Kansas City coming up this weekend. I think you got to start with the New Orleans Saints and the way the Saints are playing offensive. It's one of the best stories in the NFL through a couple of weeks. Jack, I did not see this coming. I thought New Orleans would be good, but to just be so dominant on offense, Alvin Kamara has made a big difference getting back in the lineup, as Rodney would say, getting in that run threat. But, uh, man, Derek Carr has been on fire. They have been fantastic on offense. And I look in the secondary, Coach. I think this might be the best secondary in the league. You start talking about Marshawn Lattimore didn't even play, but you got Paulson Adebo. You got Elante Taylor. Them guys are out there making plays. Tyron Matthew, he's been a tremendous leader as he's gotten older as a player. And you start looking at what they've done on the offensive side of the ball. You look at Carr, man. Carr is out there doing Michael Jackson dances. He's slinging a ball down the field. You got Rashid Shaheed, who's really the NFC's version of Tyreek Hill. Man, this kid is – and then Alvin Kamara looks like he's 25 years old, Jack. This is a new attitude, a, a new defense, a new offensive line. They're playing tough and physical. Man, it's really, really fun to watch. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm I do want to 15 yards, 65 go. receiving yards, and four Damn. total touchdowns. That sounds like a month's worth of work. Damn, that was coach. one game. Yeah, no, he what is hot. Say, they've, been playing, they've been playing great football. But let's go back and take a look. Remember now, we're only at week two. Uh, we don't know how good the Carolina Panthers are. We thought the Dallas Cowboys were great. We thought the Cowboys were playing fantastic defense. We still don't know how good they are. So let's just hold off. Carolina, Dallas, is that a big test? Uh, definitely Saints eating good right now, but let's see how the rest of September plays out. <laughs> hey, Coach, you know that old saying, you can only play who's in front of you. And we know <laughs> that Carolina is really, really bad. But for them to go and do what they did against the Dallas Cowboys, which, you know, they got some talent on defense. They got some talent, obviously, on the offensive side of the ball. Won 12 games the last couple of years. Um, I thought that was pretty impressive right there. So, something else interesting I was looking at is the coming off play action. They've been using more play action this year, talking about the Saints. And last year, Derek Carr, the best QBR in the NFL on play action. The only downside is the Saints used it at a lower percentage than any other team in the league. So coming into this year, something they looked at, they've been going to that play action, and the results have been there for them. And I think that's where Kamara has helped. Now when you are running the ball on first down and, and getting chunk yardage and people have to defend that, it makes the play action even more effective and it makes your offensive coordinator think we can use it now because we do have a threat in the running game. And it, it's been outstanding. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of Taylor Hills, man, and, and just what – what he brings to this offense, what he brings to the team. When you see a guy, like if I see a guy playing three, four, or five different positions, running down on kickoff, playing quarterback, playing fullback, playing tight end, playing wide receiver, I got so much respect for him coaching. Just think about how unselfish of a player you have to be yeah. and how smart you have to be to be able to move around in those different positions. Have you ever had a player that, that was that good that could do all those multiple things, coach? Not that versatile. He is amazing to me. And when you're right. What a lift that gives your whole team. When you see your quarterback catch a ball and run over a safety man, <laughs> you know, that, that <laughs> makes everybody on the sideline get excited. It, it does. All right, Sam Darnold, he's been eating good too. Goes up against the 49ers. That was his team from a season ago. Got to give some credit to Flores and the defensive scheme. Now back-to-back -back years that he has shut down Shanahan. But Sam Darnold's found a home, and it looks pretty darn good in that purple of Minnesota. Coach, you no, want to do no Sam Donald? I, I will. Um, I have to tip my cap to Kevin O'Connell. He has taken quarterbacks. We were out in Denver last year, and he's got Josh Dobbs with two or three days practice, doesn't even know who the players are on his team, and he's got him playing decent football. Been through a bunch of quarterbacks. J.J. McCarthy gets hurt this year. Hey, we're going to plug Sam Donald in, and he's played lights out for two weeks in a row now. And we could say, well, week one, that was the Giants, and who who cares? This was a good San Francisco defense rod that he went after and, and really played very good football. I thought he played terrific football. And you talk about Brian Flores and what he's brought 
And just seeing him in his natural element, being a defensive coordinator where he's most comfortable, not having to be the head coach, worrying about every aspect of the team. Some guys are just meant to be coordinators. And I look at him and I say, this guy is at his happiest. He's at his at his most peaceful place when he's around those players and he's designing defenses. When you have a, a quarterback like Brock Purdy come up to you and say, hey, man, your defenses are crazy. How do you design all this stuff? That lets you know that it, it works. But not only that, veterans want to come in and play in your system because they know this is an opportunity for them to make a lot of plays to get their hands on a lot of balls. You look at Ivan Pace Jr. He's been fantastic, the middle linebacker. He's flying around. Them guys do a great job of disguising. They show you five. They rush five. They drop four. They, they rush four. Coach, they do all types of crazy schemes. It's actually really fun to watch. It is fun to watch, and I agree with you on Brian. And I'll just say this. Before we write him off as a head coach, let's think back about 30 years. There was this really successful defensive coordinator with the Giants who went to Cleveland and didn't really have a great record. And people said he was harsh and tough. And then he went back and coordinated for a little while, and then he came became head coach of the New England Patriots. And I think in his second time around, he did pretty well, I think. Yeah. What was that? And, guy's and you name? know what? And you know what, coach? Hold on. That's that's a that's a heck of a point. But what I'm saying now is you need these moments as a coordinator to help Absolutely. build your confidence, to help build your rapport and yeah. communication and just how you deal with everything to mature and to grow into that role. I'm not saying that he doesn't deserve to be a head coach, but I'm just saying he looks most comfortable right now in this role as defensive coordinator. No, I agree with you. And I'm just thinking that maybe another year or two like this and these great performances from the Vikings defense, he gets another shot. He's learned some things. And uh, who knows what's going to happen at that point with Coach Flores. Agreed. Agreed. And you got to imagine he's watching with his first opportunity. He's trying to emulate everything he saw for Bill Belichick. How could you not? I mean, the guy had all the success in the world. And you saw the way he was hard on defensively. He was hard on quarterbacks. And he's trying to take that same style. But it's a little bit of a different NFL now. It's not quite as old school. You're seeing the McVeighs, And, you know, you can go through a list of guys now that are a little more positive, a little more upbeat with their style of coaching. You don't have quite as many screamers. And I wonder if he gets another shot as a head coach, if he'll have a different style, maybe specifically with the quarterback position, but just with his approach overall. Well, you have to be yourself. And um, sometimes it just doesn't work in some places. And getting fired isn't the worst thing in the world, always. I got fired, and uh, it ended up being okay for me to go to, go to Indianapolis. So. Amen to that. And you know what, Coach? It almost seemed like it. It almost seemed like it fired him up. It gave him even more intensity. It, it almost yes. lit a, a fire up under him, and that that passion. You can just see it when he's out there. He's cheering. He's going out there hugging his guys, and that's what you want. You know, your defense coordinator to be very close with his players. And those guys have responded. They're playing excellent defense. But, Roddy, you mentioned the sound that we heard right after the game, and it's really the ultimate sign of respect when you heard Purdy and what he said to Flores. Let's play that clip right now. This is right after the win. Nice. Now, everybody, hey, Jack, now everybody's going to try to do Brian Flores' scheme, but they don't realize <laughs> this is something that you don't learn overnight, Coach. Yeah. This is something they've been doing in OTAs. They've been walking mm -hmm. through. They've been meeting. It's been, this has been going on for months. And then as when you have a crazy defense like that, you got to have veterans that understand they need to be where they need to be. If I'm next to my, say, if I'm next to the linebacker and we're dropping in zone, I can say, hey, man, you take my zone over here. I'll take your zone. But we all have to be on the same page. And that's why he loves veteran players, because they do a great job of communicating, letting them know, letting each other know, hey, I'm going to be over here and handling all the adjustments of the defense. Now, in this defense, coach, you know better than me. There's a lot of holes. There are a lot of gaping holes because guys yeah. that might blitz the wrong gap. They might get washed away and that cutback might come. So you're going to see a lot of big plays available in this defense, but they don't care about that. They want to put you in um, th third and long and they want to create pressure and, and force easy turnovers. That's what the goal of that defense is. And you talk about people copying the scheme. 
It's more than X's and O's. It's Brian Flores dialing up the right call at the right time. And sometimes I'm faking the pressure and dropping out. Now the next time I'm coming and keeping the quarterback off yep. balance. And that's where he's done a great job. Mm. Nothing like respect from the opposing quarterback, though. When he's saying that right after the game, that hits a little bit. <laughs> it tells you a lot. It tells you it a tells lot. You a lot. <laughs> Let's get to the uh, L.A. Chargers. We'll talk about eating good. Hardball. Couple of games, that's all it took. And he's got them eating good out there, Hot Rod, your old squad. Hey, man, I told you, Coach, in the playoffs, was that last year or the year before? Was that last Yeah, that was last That's year. It. I told you in the playoffs that this guy would be the right guy for him. And think about it. we It's been two weeks. We haven't had any distractions, no arguments, no discussions about fourth and one or holding or missed field goal or any sarcasm. They finally have a leader. They have their culture set, and he's the leader. And, you know, all the players have said it. They're happy that he's there. He holds guys accountable. We see Justin Herbert. He's already seems or appears to be a lot tougher, Coach. You know what I love, Rodney? You mentioned Justin Herbert. Well, he's there, the centerpiece of the franchise. They bring in a coach who was a former quarterback. You think, I'm going to build everything around this guy. I'm going to make Justin Herbert fantastic. Jim Harbaugh says, no, no, no. I'm going to go back to my roots. We're drafting an offensive tackle. I got another offensive tackle in place. We're going to be smash mouth, power, tough. That's going to be our culture. Yes, we got a great quarterback, and we're going to use him. But you know what? We are going to be tougher than whoever we play, and I think that's been the key. And how about what we've seen from Dobbins? 130-plus yards in both these games, the touchdowns in both of these games. But, Coach, I think you made a great point with Joe Alt, and you pair him with Slater. That's got to be one of the best tackle combinations, really, in the entire league. you got Johnson at left guard, Pipkins at right guard, and so – their offensive, line, this feels like hardball football, right? I mean, this feels like the way he won a national championship at Michigan. And people are saying he doesn't have the receivers. It's going to take him a year to implement this. Forget about it. It's day one with these L.A. Chargers. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.